Yep. So as I was saying, uh, let's, let's start looking into the message, uh, how it is implemented. Uh, the message itself is abstracted uh, for the consumers in a way that it is never needed to be present as uh, GWE or GWS. So the consumer of the library doesn't need to worry about that. Uh, and the cryptography, which we'll talk about a bit later, is implemented in a way that it can be replaced uh, with any implementation which is legally required or, I don't know, from other requirements, there is a need to implement uh, cryptography in a way that the key doesn't leave some specific context uh, or some specific uh, implementation of the algorithm is used. Uh, okay, so the message itself uh, has two separate headers, uh, which are flattened on serialization. Uh, the GWM header is a public Jose header, if this is a GWE or GWS uh, output. And the body is uh, a set of bytes. Uh, we've had a discussion internally, uh, what would be the better way to present the body of the message. And uh, there were suggestions to use uh, like a specific generic types for for the body. So there will be some type check, uh, but that would bring some possible limitations in the future. And we were targeting during this implementation to cover um, maybe all or most of the possible usage scenarios from IoT to web, to embed, to whatever platform it can be used or needed to be used. So in such way, the body is just the lowest thing that can be, just a set of bytes. And usually in this scenario, it's up to consumer how to serialize it, how to read through it. And let's go into the first example, how to create a raw message, send it and receive it back. So this is quite straightforward. We create a new message, uh, set the from header to it, to header and uh, body, any payload again, but should be bytes. And we serialize it as a raw JSON message. Uh, this message will be serialized and then we send it. After the transport, we call a receive method. This one is universal for most types of the messages. Uh, I think only JWS without JWE uh, wrapping envelope is not supported at this stage. Everything else is parsed by the same function. Uh, so we give it the received bytes and we give no key because we know that it's raw message. We can look into the example how this uh, looks as JSON. If I put we have on wrap probably somewhere there. Okay, let's take a look. So any questions to this stage? Not sure how you, if you are able to see this, if it's scaled up for you. Basically it's JSON serialized. You have uh, some headers and then you have body as a set of bytes. Yeah, this is quite straightforward, no magic here. Okay, next, uh, more complex example, how we create a direct uh, GWE message from sender to recipient. So this example has uh, algorithm definition, which uh, encryption we will use. So again, this can be implemented by the consuming crate or consuming code, uh, 
but we have the batteries included in form of crypto algorithm and signing algorithm in ARMS which have the implementations of the encrypting decrypting methods and signing verification methods on them. Here we have some key. Obviously, this key will come from the bit uh, or from <laughs> anything else at this stage. Uh, so at this point, we are not doing any uh, deep doc manipulations or key wrapping and wrapping. So if you would like to consume this, it would be up to you to call in code uh, to handle all that. Uh, although there are there is a support for uh, key type headers and key ID headers in the message in uh, GWM header as it's specified by uh, by the RFC. So. Uh, here we uh, set the body for it, set it as JWE, uh, providing the algorithm we use. This method will create the proper header properties to identify that it's JWE message and which algorithm is used and uh, all required stuff for JWE to be created. We are adding some custom headers here uh this is uh, allowed by spec so you can add whatever uh, headers you want to the message um, it's kind of per application if your application need this uh, spec allows this if there are some headers which are not uh, identified by your application they will just be discarded or not used it won't create any headers and here we set the key id uh, to something and we call seal method which will uh, using the key which will encrypt it and will produce the encrypted gwm in form of uh, string yeah. and then we have our ready to send uh, this is a separate example. I need to clean this up because uh, compact serialization is now dropped by spec. Uh, it's just here in the example. So this method is no longer valid. Uh, okay. Any questions on GWE creation? Okay, so let's go to JWS. Uh, so this message is just signed, but not encrypted. Uh, and this is kind of unique scenario. Uh, and it's not yet supported by receive method uh, on the message. So you will have to call at this page, uh, sign and verify methods on it. Uh, everything else looks pretty much the same. We set our headers here, set our body to something, set it as GWS and we sign it, uh, providing the algorithm uh, with the specific method to use to sign and some keeper to do the signing. And on verify, we take our message as bytes and we provide our uh, public key here, and it does the unwrapping of GWS. And transport is happening in between. Yeah, any questions? Okay, so, yeah, anyone want to say something? No, no I think I would just ask questions after you, you gave your presentation. Okay, so uh, this is a big example on uh, GWS wrapped into GWE. No, that's just a big example of uh, mediated uh, GWE. Okay, so this one is uh, this the routing. Uh, it has an envelope around it, which will be encrypted to our mediator or to recipient's mediator whoever is mediating it. Uh, yeah, so again, first part is the same, creating, adding header, setting body, setting it as GWE, uh, some custom headers to it, uh, adding key ID, and then we 
additionally call this method which is routed by and we add the key uh, for our mediator and uh, we specify uh, additionally the vector of two which will be included into the uh, envelope message header public header or host the header for it and then when we are ready we seal it as JWE, because this message will be created as a message not sealed, but with the sealed body of the message we deliver to receiver. And then we seal it again. And this method will be sealing it for the mediator. After it's sealed, it is double encrypted. So receiving like the receiver message is encrypted as a payload for mediator message. Then it's transported to our mediator, which reads it, receives it, sees that it's a mediated header, and we need to forward it. Uh, it un unpacks it, and then it uh, sends it to whoever is the recipient here, which again calls the same method and receives the end message. So there is an option to rewrap it here with the spec updates and uh, it can be done by because the message is obstructed in a way that there is no difference in what is the payload, GWE, GWS, whatever is there, you always have the instance of this message when you receive so you can rewrap it, uh, add additional envelope around it if it's mediated by some other mediators, which our sender is not aware of, but the mediator does. So mediator needs to rewrap it or just to preserve the size of the message, whatever is the reason it can be rewrapped at this stage and then sent uh, up forward. And again, the same method called and it will be unwrapped and retrieved. Yeah. Any questions here? Okay, so last example for today is GWS wrapped into GWE. So it's signed and encrypted. Then we create our message, our headers, our body, we set it as encrypted. And uh, adding headers, adding TID. So the message creation pretty much the same. Uh, this does not encrypt it. It just said that this message will be encrypted. And then uh, we call this seal signs method instead of just seal, uh, giving crypto key, signing key, uh, type of the signature and we will have our wrapped message and again we send it so at this at this stage we have original message signed and wrapped as gws and then encrypted into gwe envelope so we send it uh, we again call the same receive method it will unwrap and unfold everything verify the signature for us uh, we'll check, uh, will not check the key as it's set in the spec. So the key validation, as we are not handling the keys and uh, all the Jose headers related to the key IDs, uh, explicitly that part at this stage needs to be checked by the calling code if the key has uh, the property to be used for signing. Yep, that's that's all. Uh, and again, for the pluggable cryptography, there are two traits implemented. Uh, one is for signature, uh, which is signer and uh, validation. And another one is for crypto algorithm for cryptography. So the batteries which are included here, they implement uh, crypto algorithms are both implemented uh, and uh, signature algorithms, all three are implemented as well. 
Awesome. <clears throat> cool. I have a question. Um, maybe I have a follow-up question as well. So this is the seal method and the seal signed method <coughs> specifically. Um, so in, in that model, um, so who would need to take care of ensuring that the from and to fields um, basically correlate with 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 the encryption keys and signing key pairs? Because yeah, so as, yeah, as I mentioned, we are not having this part implemented at this stage. So the calling code, whatever the application is, will have to take care of that at this point. Right. So from to and the properties, additional properties on the keys, if they are uh, valid, if they are uh, okay to be used for signing, yeah, that's that. All of that should be checked by the calling code. Okay. So this this um, so also after the code um, donation, this will be out of scope of the um, the core library, so to say, right? Just wondering what other people. So, so, if, so this is this is like a workshop session, and um, would love to see or hear other people's opinions on based on hands-on experience with the spec. Um, so. Yeah, so um, I think I can give some of our experience if that's if that's useful. Sure. <clears throat> so um, the way that the way that uh, our our implementation, which is an open source at this stage, uh, sort of breaks things up is obviously you have a Jose layer, which is um, really just about standardizing the expression of a cipher or digital signatures and associated payloads or a mixture of both. Um, and at that point, you have things like references to keys being used to perform various crypto operations and sort of hinting at how say a signature can be validated or a cipher can be decrypted. <clears throat> and so at that layer, we there's really no notion or no need for a notion of things like decentralized identifiers. It's really just um, uh, implementing Jose in the purest form. And then the layer above that, uh, in, in my sort of opinion and, and where the abstractions lie, is that that layer should then um, essentially cleanly introduce the concept of DIDs and handle things like DID resolution and uh, essentially referring to senders and recipients, uh, recipients and senders in the form of decentralized identifiers and um, catch things like if you're trying to send to a DID that doesn't have a key agreement key, um, if you don't have a key agreement key with the sender, you want to use uh, whether or not your keys are of different types so they don't coordinate, so that there's a, essentially there's a breakdown and interop. Um, that's, that's where we found the, the best sort of boundaries to lie, but um, yeah. Yeah, so that, that was our initial thought as well, right? Just to not limit from the start, not to tie it up to some specific bit method, some specific resolver or some specific platform. Uh, instead to have like a lowest level, uh, lowest layer of the spec and then allow it to be used in various scenarios. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's um, that's absolutely right, and what you guys have done is is, is very similar in that respect. Um, in in short, um, like at this layer, I would I would say a, a great way to evolve it would be um, if you supply a did in the two field and the methods unknown or it's unresol it's unresolvable by the uh, resolver that is plugged into this library or perhaps extended. It should give you a clean sort of, uh, you know, I was unable to encrypt this message because I can't resolve the did you gave me. Um, through to errors like I managed to resolve the did, but there's no key agreement key, so I can't encrypt to this did. Um, and and just having jumping off points, so the ability for people to plug in drivers for new did methods, I think, is as a, as a way we can build this extensible. So 
certain methods don't get um, kind of favorable um, treatment over others. Yeah, so the, I guess that's a great idea to have something like pluggable resolvers and then having some additional methods to verify uh, based on the traits that, that is totally possible. Uh, because we wanted to avoid implementation of the resolver right in the protocol, because that's not related to DITCOM, really. Uh, yeah, so that's that's probably a good way uh, we can improve this. Cool. <clears throat> um, any other questions or comments? Um, so technically, this session ends in two minutes. <laughs> I guess not sure who will follow after this session. Any other questions or comments or experiences from hands-on development uh, of the spec from anyone on this call? You want to share with us? Um, so mechanically, I don't think there's anyone scheduled for this uh, room. So if we bled over, that's probably fine. And I'd love to say that this is awesome. Um, I, I love the way this is uh, this is laid out and, and you know seeing this being chased. I, I know you're building against something that's moving. So I, I applaud you um, and, uh, and I'm grateful for the, the work that you're doing that provides insight. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so I guess the last statement from me would be is that the repo is public, so everyone can touch it. Uh, feedback is greatly welcome. Uh, maybe we can have like, I don't know, integration tests uh, with other implementations if someone else is working uh, on the implementation of this v2. That also would be great. And uh, yeah. Thank you. If anyone has another implementation, how would we best get in touch with you? I guess on the diff Slack or? Uh, diff Slack or GitHub. I was actually wondering if there's already a TypeScript implementation of that. So this is a- I haven't seen one. Okay. Does, does that code cross compile using mscript into TypeScript or to wasm, I mean? Have you ever tried that? Uh, not yet, but uh, that's one of the future work we are planning to do, to have it uh, was compiled. Maybe not from the get-go, because we are not using Wasm at this point <laughs> internally. No, but I, out, I mean, right? You, I, I guess the code will definitely compile. The problem is always if the dependencies, uh, so the batteries are also cross compiling. This is uh, yeah. So all the all the crypto crates are uh, was incompatible. So okay. yes, you you can do that. That'd be interesting. Thank you. Awesome. So if there are no other questions, um, I think then we can close the session. Um, thank you very much for attending and thank you so much um, Ivan and Yolocom for um, providing this and also let's make progress with um, making this available under the diff um, GitHub repository. <laughs> hey, Oliver, was this uh, demonstrations as well or was this more accustomed to just our workshop. So this was just um, the the demonstration um, of the of the library that um, is about to be donated. Oh, what what do you mean? Um, I mean we can use this call for any other um, did come related uh, topics as well. I mean we um, my intention was to also use this as a platform for implementers who want to chat about um, you know to get feedback from from implementers on the spec itself. Um, so any, any okay, ideas, so, um, welcome. Okay, so I, um, I, a while ago, I did a little quick demonstration of um, our CLI, which um, isn't currently open source, but demonstrates some integration with, um, with say, uh, GitHub as well that I could quickly show if that's of use. Yeah, sure. I, mean, I think um, we, this room is technically not occupied. <laughs> so you could, um, so if, please, yeah. 
Go ahead. Okay. So we have a, uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Uh, and just checking it's the CLI, because I've got a couple of screens and uh, not sure which one. Yeah, we got, we got several. Okay. Um, so um, apologies for those who've already seen this, so hopefully it'll be useful to some people. Um, we have sort of a, an implementation that we've been working on that allows us to do basic things uh, like uh, encrypt and decrypt um, messages. Uh, it doesn't demonstrate transport, but it allows us to interface with the capabilities. So um, we have the ability to, if I um, list if several DIDs here, I've got the ability to, these are DIDs that I have keys for locally. And if I uh, do message encrypt, to um, uh, first actually I'll just show my message. Um, uh, so this is just a little message that I can encrypt. So if I go meta message encrypt to this did uh, my message. Uh, this is essentially the JWE that results. So you'll notice that this is using ECDH ES. So there's no sender authentication here. There's no sender, but you can see that it was encrypted to automatically, it was encrypted to the key agreement key um, of that did. And if I, if I send that out to uh, um, file, then I can do meta message decrypt um with the encrypted dot json and i get back um essentially a payload telling me that it wasn't it wasn't verified which is basically whether or not it was signed the algorithm that was used to decrypt and uh, who it was sent to i can also uh, for those who are familiar um we've prelim preliminarily set up the ability to link dids to um, other social handles so um, for those who are familiar with say uh, Keybase will be familiar with the ability to essentially associate Keybase public keys uh, or Keybase usernames in general to other social profiles to create um, useful hooks. Um, we have defined a way that we intend to make into a spec when we have spec capacity to essentially link a decentralized identifier to a social handle. So you can see here uh, this here is a, um, a link data a verifiable credential in the form of a JSON-LD document, which is uh, signed by the key we would like to keep here, we would like to associate this account to, uh, and, the, and it's claiming ownership of, the, uh, of my GitHub account. And because it is hosted, under the namespace of my GitHub account, the GitHub account is essentially inversely claiming association to it. So it's a bi-directional link, which then allows me to do um, something like this, where I can query a GitHub account to find out whether or not there are any dits associated to it. And as I can see, I can see one's there. So I can now go meta message encrypt. Instead of a did, I can use a human friendly identifier, which makes um, the experience a little bit easier because it's not meant to be human meaningful, um, human memorable, sorry. And if I do that, um, that has produced a, an encrypted result for that did. And if I, again, send that uh, to a encrypted file because I have the keys locally for that did, I am able to decrypt it. It's pretty cool, pretty awesome. Um, one quick question, or actually one <laughs> recommendation maybe. So this is this is a great command line tool and Ivan, they, they produced a library. Um, would it make sense to 
try to test whether <laughs> your output can be decrypted by their library and vice versa. So like come up with a like absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It'd be great. It'd be great. I can um essentially this is a JWE, uh just serialized in in JSON serialization. And if I give the uh essentially the private key for this KID, uh in theory, this should be decryptable. Um, and the, the kind of this payload should be uh, retrieved. So Ivan, is this sort of, because you mentioned also integration testing earlier, is, is this something that you would also like to do? Yeah, we need just to agree on the transport <laughs> and we can try, uh, but I, I will have to create like a calling wrapper, basically executable, which will be doing something similar. Um, probably from CLI to just receive message into a file or encrypt it from a file. I, I would I would say even even simpler, Ivan, is really just having some static test vectors. So just having some JWEs essentially checked in uh, to your um, implementation that you can just test under under an, a unit test in Rust, essentially that it just reads that from a file. And so no need to build out a CLI, really just here is a JWE test that you can decrypt it and that the result, the pay, resulting payload you get back is, um, is the text that was encrypted. Yep, sounds great. Uh, we can sync up on Slack or via email. That would be great. Yes, Slack like would be awesome because then um, the rest of the diff um, <clears throat> working group, the DITCOM working group would also see that um, these conversations are happening. And yeah, would love to see that. Totally excited. Yep, great. Um, Tobias, um, do you have anything else to show or? Did no, that was that was really it. So it, just to be clear, it wasn't demonstrating um, sending of the messages. Obviously, Bitcoin because it's messaging based. Um, in the simplest form, you can just use the kind of encryption and self encapsulated encryption and decryption layer to essentially securely share information. So that encrypted.json file that I showed, um, you could send over Slack or any other medium. Um, to share a secret with someone else based on bits um, without any further uh, implementation required. Cool. Um, so if there are no other questions or people who want to show a demo, um, I think we can finish this call. So again, um, thank you very much, Ivan and Tobias, for presenting this today. And looking forward to see more progress on the test vectors and other implementations. Thanks a lot. Thanks all. Have a great day.